Hi, and welcome to another Leeds Guitar Studio video. Today we're looking at shell voicings. Now, to summarise, shell voicings are seventh chords where the fifth of the chord has been omitted. And they're most commonly used to uh, you know, render jazz standards harmonically, so you know, comping uh, as the basis for chord melody arrangements, all the rest of it. So if you're going to play jazz or any other form of music, really, you need to be familiar with them. So if you're omitting the fifth, that really means you've two practical options. You've got uh, root third seventh and root seventh third. And uh, seeing as you've got three chord families, as it were, major seventh, minor seventh, dominant seventh, that means you've got six shapes that you need to be on top of. The minor seven flat five chord, of course, is going to be the same as the minor seventh chord because you're not playing the fifth. So it'll look the same even though harmonically it's implied. Um, so the sequence we're going to use, or the exercise we're going to do, is to take a typical jazz standard progression, a cyclic progression, and it starts A minor 7th, D minor 7th, G7, C major 7, F major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, though it looks the same as B minor 7, E7, which is your dominant turnaround chord, resolving back to the beginning, A minor 7. And you see there, I used the same voicing all the way through there. And it meant that I was doing a lot of this. A lot of jumping around, and melodically not terribly smooth. So the idea is you take each bar length chord and you divide that up. So instead of playing four beats on the same voicing, you're playing two beats on one, and then you're playing two beats on the other. So that then means that you get this. Melodically, it's more interesting, a bit smoother. Uh, but it means you are doing those jumps and shifting from the same chord in different inversions. Uh, now, that's nicer straight away, uh, and you can do that then with any chord progression you might find in the real book. So you real open the real book up, find something that doesn't have, you know, that has sort of bar long or even two bar, uh, sorry, two beat length chord changes, and apply that exercise to that sequence and you do it as slow as you need to do it to get it right and eventually of course you'll be really fluid and whenever you're reading a, a standard and you run into a chord shape you're going to be a jump to a nearby one or a, a good choice um, and know where to find whatever chord it is you need. Laters, bye.